the title of the chapter talks about the compounds and their bonds. So the compounds, when we're talking about ionic compounds or covalent compounds. Ionic compounds, when electrons are transferred by losing or gaining, just like our table salt, sodium chloride. Or it can be sharing of electrons, like water, and so those are the two types of compounds that we'll be talking about tonight. So what do we mean when we say octet? We know that octet means eight, right, on the top. So atoms are not noble gas, that are not noble gases form octets to be more stable. So in our periodic table, when we have sodium, which is in group one, right, if you look at your textbooks, may I borrow someone's textbook here real quick? So when you look at the periodic table in your textbook, you have Na, right? And there's group one, right? So Na. Then you have group two, let's look at calcium or magnesium. And then in the group three, let's look at aluminum. So we learned that group one, group two, group three, A, they tend to lose electrons to form an octet. Chlorine, the group, the halogens, chlorine in this uh, group seven A, right? We call them the halogens. They tend to gain one electron from the group ones, okay? While well, the group 6A or group 16 will tend to gain two electrons from the group two. You see how? So because, because in the outermost shell, of sodium, there's only one electron, so they keep one. In the outermost shell of calcium and magnesium, there are two electrons, so there's two. Right? Well, if you look at neon, right? Neon has 10 electrons. You see the number 10 in the top, so 10 electrons. So when we say valence electrons, the electrons in, that are in the outermost shell. So when you see neon, there are two electrons in the inside, in the innermost, and then there are eight in the outermost electrons. So that's how we refer to as the octet rule. Atoms combine to form an octet. They can either lose or gain electrons, but then they can also share electrons. So if they lose or gain, they call it an ionic compound. And what is an ionic compound? It consists of a metal, okay, so very important. Ionic compounds have metal plus a non-metal. So what is a metal? Are there group one, group two, right? Lithium, sodium, potassium. I should go down the group one. So all of you know that all this blue is kind of like blue, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or metals. And then the yellows, oh, they are the non-metals. And the green are the metals. Very good, okay? So they put hydrogen here and hydrogen because hydrogen can be plus or minus. So when you have sodium, right? So there's one electron in the outer shell. So how many electrons does sodium have? Eleven, right? So it's two, eight, one. Yeah? So therefore there's one electron. Who, how many of you get that and how many? Did you understand it? Okay, very nice, good. Okay, so here's the definition of ionic and covalent bonds. By losing or gaining, we have ionic. By sharing, we have covalent. Okay, so covalent. 
So any questions there? So now we look at the octet, right? So if you have your textbooks, take a look that neon, of course, is, would have all the normal gases in, in group A should have 888, right? Within group A. So argon will have 288, krypton will have 28. So, so then for two and eight. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out a little bit uh, shortly. I'll explain that to you. So let's uh, look at how, how ionic bonds are formed. So do we all understand that magnesium will have two electrons in the outermost shell? Okay, wonderful. And so that Magnesium has 12 protons, 2 electrons, so it's 2, 8, 2, right? So in the outermost shell. So if I write down magnesium, so MD, so it will be 2, 8, 2, and that's why it's 2. That's to lose 2 electrons. So magnesium will become a 2 plus when it uses the 2 electrons. So magnesium here, will have two electrons, right? And then it will tend to lose it. Well, sodium only has one, right? Chlorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See that? Okay. How many get it? How many don't? You got it? Okay, good, good. Okay. So, the chlorine atoms, anyone gonna have problems with that? Okay, so so metals form positive ions, very, very important. So take note of this, right? Group 1A, we will have plus 1. Group 2A, we will have 2 plus. So group 3A, so we are in our, if you will locate the aluminum first, where is aluminum? What number? So aluminum is in 3A, but column 13, right? And so there's aluminum. There's gallium, there's indium. So aluminum has three. So aluminum will look like this. So Al, right? One, two, three, right? So it'll be two, eight, three, right? Because 13. How easy is that? <laughs> okay. So now let's move on further. Uh, we'll then cover forming forming ions, right? Now let's look at forming non-metals form negative ions, right? So what are some examples of 7A? This could be an example here would be Cl minus. What would be an example? What would be an example of, uh, so chloride ion, right? You need to put the Cl in the superscript, right? For the group six, what would it be? Oxygen, very good. So it would be O2 minus, right? It's actually superscript, right? So here it would be, oh, okay, let me put it O. Outside ion, which is O2 minus, and they belong to the group six. And for group five A nine metals, what would they be called? What's an example? Nitrogen, right? So nitride ion would be N3 minus. So, so the you have, we'll, we'll wait for a bit. So, chloride ion would be Cl minus. So Cl, Cl, chloride minus, right? Or O2 minus, right? So this is, one minus, right? 
and then nitride is 3 minus. So how do we form the chloride ion? So chloride normally has chloride normally has how many to form the octet for chloride? It goes from seven, it just gains an electron, so it will be two eight eight. You see that? Right? You know it's hard to visualize the negative charge, right? So it gains an electron, so then the chloride is 288, while well, sodium is Na plus is 28. That's a little bit, a little bit tough to visualize. Who would like to share and paraphrase their understanding of it? So let's see if, if see, let's see if it's worked out further. So if you have your textbook, take a look at table 4.1. Here are some examples, right? Nitride, phosphide, oxide, sulfide, chloride, bromide, iodide. So you, during the exam, you will want to really know which are the group one, group two, group three metals that tend to lose because you'll be assessed on that, right? as well as the halogens and, the, and then the uh, normal gases, at least figure out how many valence electrons are in their outermost shell. So now we need to be able to write the formula <coughs> and the symbol of an ion. So when we say, what, what is the formula of an ion, then we'll have 16 protons and 18 electrons. So the element with 16 protons is sulfur, and the symbol is S, right? For sulfur is S. And an ion of sulfur, because it's where oxygen is in the group, so therefore, sulfur will tend to gain two electrons. So the charge is two minus. And the sulfide ion is S2 minus. How many got it? How many did that? Make some more examples. We'll try to make some more examples. Okay. So, I got it. you got it. Okay. No? Okay, so when we gain, maybe if we, but you understand sodium and chloride, right? Very clear. Right? Now, sulfur, sulfur is quite similar to oxygen, right? because it's also two minus. So, so far, has how many electrons? 18. 16, 16, 16 right? Yes. So, so, two, eight, six, right? right? But then it gains two more electrons, so what does it become? 18. So then it will be plus two, so then it will be two, eight, eight. A, and so this is S2 minus, and this is just so far. Right? You see that? Okay. Now let's look at magnesium. Okay. What is magnesium? It's 2A2. Right? So magnesium is, the metal is 2A2, but then when it becomes magnesium plus, two plus, we're gonna remove the two electrons, so magnesium two plus will just be two eight, okay? Because these two electrons will, will bond to two more chlorine, okay? So when we have name of the added compounds, then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll understand it a little bit more, okay? So, so then, how do we go about naming some ionic compounds? Ionic compounds meaning, how do we make table salt? We take some sodium metal, 
and combine it with a very reactive chlorine gas, and you have a very harmless table salt crystal. So let's uh, let's see what we have. So ionic compounds, therefore, have positive and negative ions, right? So ionic ion, right? Mm -hmm. So think of positive and negative. So they have high melting points, and they tend to be solid at room temperature because it takes a while to melt them. And then sodium chloride, table salt, is an ionic compound. We have so sodium metal plus chlorine Cl2 gas to form an ACL, right? Everyone understands that because I've used this example since, since, since day one. So you're familiar with it. How many don't remember what sodium chloride? That sodium chloride is table salt. Everyone kind of knows it, right? Okay. So what is an ionic formula? How do we write down, what is the rules for writing down an ionic formula? First we write down the metal symbol. So for for table salt, sodium chloride, we write down the metal symbol for sodium, which is Na. Right? Mm -hmm. How many of you have your have your textbooks or so so you can kind of take a look, right? So Na, and then how many? And then the non-metal symbol. So all we need to do is just write Na and Cl and call it sodium chloride, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So because the total positive charge, right, should equal the total negative charge. Because sodium chloride is neutral, right? So the plus, one plus, and one minus cancel out each other. So you have sodium chloride is a neutral ionic compound. What happens if we want to make magnesium chloride? So this is where it, it gets uh, a bit uh, we want to stretch our imagination. Because magnesium has two electrons in the valence, in the outermost shell. And so when it loses electrons, it becomes really, really small. And chlorine, when it gains an electron, gets really, really big. Because Remember the size of the protons and the, the size of the electrons? Electrons are really, really big. So when chlorine gains an electron to form the chloride ion, it only has one negative. And magnesium is two plus. So it takes two chlorine atoms to, to bond to form an ion, ionic magnesium chloride compound. You get it? Okay, good. Very good. Now, if we wanted to make make it into aluminum, right? So if it takes two two chloride ions to form magnesium chloride, so to make aluminum chloride, how many chloride ions do I need? Three. Three. Excellent. So then for magnesium chloride, we would say LgCl2, but for aluminum chloride, it will be AlCl3. So we just name it the metal, right? So magnesium, chloride. Well, this one, we just name the metal and say aluminum, chloride. So now, do we get it? Right? Yeah. Yeah, because this, this we call this subscript, sub, right? This is in the middle, this is in the bottom, right? It's not, it's not written as A, L, C, L, 3, right? It's, how do we know? Because aluminum tends to be plus 3. That's how you know. Okay, so you need to understand that portion. So in other words, if aluminum is plus three and chloride is minus one, then 
then it will it will need three more Okay. So let's take another example. We have sulfide here, right? S2 minus. If we have sulfide and we want to we want to combine it with silver because this is two minus. What should I put in silver? Two. Very good. Because we know silver is in group one. See that? Can I erase the other two minus? Yeah, so then it, then it will be, then that's the formula for silver sulfide. So we say silver sulfide. And this is called, uh, when you have real silver, tarnish, right? Tarnish. When, when your real silver turns kind of grayish, blackish stuff. Silver tarnish, right? That we get white or green, a real silver, spoons and forks, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, how many understand this? How many don't? This is kind of. I don't think so. Okay. I understand group one should be in the group one, but group two should be in group two. Seven and eight, how they give and take. Yes, yes. The transition elements in the middle. Yeah, let's not worry about transition elements too much. Yeah, isn't silver in the middle? No, it's right on the transitional here. Forty-seven. Yeah. Forty-seven, right? Forty-seven. Silver is in the middle. Yeah. Yes, one B. Yeah. I shouldn't have used silver as an example, right? We go by one. It's one. Yeah, it's one again. Thank you. And the transition metals, they can have, copper can have one, copper can have two. But because tarnish is, we see tarnish at home, right? Or you've never seen tarnish? <laughs> We're familiar with silver tarnishing, right? Well, we know gold doesn't tarnish. But silver does. So, so hence, I, I like to use that example because she does use it. Timberlake does no. use it when you start uh, mixing, uh, mixing some in chapter solutions in chapter seven. So, so you have magnesium, calcium, and you're quite familiar also probably with barium, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when when someone has to have a CT scan, they make some kind of a barium um, any questions so far? Let's let's continue on. So how do we go about writing ionic formulas? We, we say write down the metal and then the non-metal, right? We just don't bother about the numbers. We just say aluminum chloride, sodium chloride. Okay. So total positive, plus total negative. Right. Okay, so here's another one, right? How would we call, since sulfide is 2 minus and sodium is 1 plus, so we have to write down Na2S, right? And so how would we call, how would we name it? Sodium, we just say sodium sulfide. So you say the metal and the non metal. So that's for the ionic. Compounds. So you want to make sure when we name it, right? You say the say the metal. <coughs> and non-metal. So for example, if we have sodium sulfide. So if the ionic compound is Na2S, we just say sodium <coughs> sulfide. Is so that pretty easy? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. And when it talks about charge balancing, right? Since sulfide has 
gains two electrons, right? So it takes it takes two sodium to form a neutral sodium sulfide. Okay. Any questions there? Okay, so what happens if we have barium 2 plus and Cl minus? So if barium 2 plus, what would be the formula of the compound? Ba Cl2. Cl2, very, very good. So BaCl2, and we call the compound, you say the metal, what's the metal? Barium and chloride. Right? Barium chloride. Awesome. So now let's go to the polyatomic ions. You almost you just have to memorize the most important cation. Cation that means plus, right? Cation. And we have the ammonium, NH4+. Plus. Okay? And then for, for us, because it's important, you will want to know the sulfate, SO4, 2 minus, which is the sulfate, and the, so 2 minus, and then the phosphate, three minus, three minus. So sulfate, oops, PO4, three minus. And then, of course, is there a minus one? Of course, there is a minus one. Nitrate. <coughs> NO3 minus. So this, this is an example of, these are four examples of polyatomic ions that we will be using. So, So polyatomic ions can have negative charge or a positive charge, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the only, the one and only cation, and a lot of them are anions. So covalent compounds and their names. How do we go about naming the covalent compounds? We know Covalent compounds share electrons. Right? So how do we go about, about naming them? So one thing you will want to remember that hydrogen molecule or gases like hydrogen. So H2. What are other gases, right? CO2, foreign gas, right? Bromine gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, right? They all tend to exist as a diatomic molecule, right? So we say hydrogen, but these are all gases. So we just say nitrogen gas, bromine gas, bromine gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, okay? And of course, there's helium and a few more bromine. So we form hydrogen, but then we can also, how do we form an octet of a fluorine gas or a chlorine gas? So what we do, we know that fluorine has seven electrons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two of them forms a covalent molecule, F2, fluorine gas. The same 
You can just change the letter and put it to Cl. You can make it Br. They all have seven electrons each, and when they form, a very, very stable gaseous molecule as you form on the octet. So they're stable without having eight each? Yes, yeah, the octet, right. Just like the noble gases. Yeah, so seven. So they form the octet, right? So now what you have here, so two, four, six, and they're sharing eight, right? Two, four, six, then eight. So the line is a, are two electrons. Yes, yes. So now they're sharing it, right? And so the electrons are being shared by the, by the chlorine atoms. Now, we can look at carbon also, and that's why carbon is in a lot of organic compounds, because where does carbon fall in your, in your textbook? Take a look. Where is carbon? Yeah, it's in the four, right? And so therefore, how many electrons should we have in the outermost shell? Four. So our, our electron dot for carbon, right, would be one, two, three, four. So we call that an electron dot structure for carbon. Electron dot structure for sodium is one. Electron dot structure for aluminum is three dots. The relation to that. Okay? So then, very, very simple swap gas methane. Carbon can bond with hydrogen, four hydrogens, to form methane gas. CH4, an organic compound. Nice and simple, right? Okay. So then, then carbon can also form double bonds and triple bonds. Guess what type of, of bonds it can form? So to form our carbon dioxide, right? We exhale. Like so in this classroom, it's probably we're giving up a lot of carbon dioxide, CO2. So CO2, right, is since carbon has four electrons and then oxygen, oxygen tends to be six, right? So then we we can form CO2, but then to to make the formula CO2. We write down the four dots for carbon, right? One, two, three, four. So oxygen has six. So then we have to make a double bond. Because carbon has six, right? Two, four, five, six, right? And then carbon has four. So one, two, three, four. And so you have the CO2 molecule in the carbon. We'll probably not try to focus too much yet on, on the other triple bonds. We'll wait for that and we'll go to, to organic chemistry chapter 10. Okay? But because CO2 is important, so might as well introduce it now. Then let's look at then what electronegativity is all about. What do we mean when we say something is really electronegative? So electronegativity is defined as the attraction of an atom for a shared electron. That's the definition of electronegativity. So for us, the most electronegative atom is fluorine F. Here, right? As an electronegativity of four. So, so the electronegativity goes from left to right. That's right. That's all we need to know for now. As far as the electronegativity of the. So it's very high for nonmetals. Fluorine is the highest, and very low for the metals because it's going going up from left to right. So fluorine is the most electronegative. Lithium has only one, right? And look, as it goes down, it decreases. 
And so when we look at the different types of bonds, right, when we say when a bond is ionic and when a bond is nonpolar, when you have, when we're just making hydrogen or nitrogen or oxygen, these bonds are nonpolar. But then, when we make, say, like an H and an F, then it becomes polar. So if we have H with an F, right? So this is just very tiny, but then this is, this is much, much bigger, so now it's polar. Because uh, fluorine will tend to draw that electron from hydrogen more closer to itself. And because because of that, you don't put a plus and negative, so the chlorine is more negative, well, where the hydrogen is, it's more positive. And then because of that, the because of the polarity of the bonds, so we come up with interesting shapes of molecules. So remember the uh, ammonium ion? To form the ammonium ion, it's just ammonia and then put a hydrogen in here. So that's called a tetrahedral shape. So the shape, tetrahedral arrangement of ammonia. But then if you put a hydrogen here, that will be, that will be our ammonium cation. So in other words, our, our when we put a hydrogen here, right? So then it will be, um, actually we put a, a, a proton H plus there again. It will be this ammonium ion. So this is called a, called a tetrahedral arrangement. We can do the same thing too for, for carbon. Carbon also, because carbon has four, right, electrons, then we can also put a hydrogen add them here to form methane, that's one gas, right? Methane. So compounds and shapes and the bond. So we like to look at when when a molecule tends to be, be uh, arranged, if there are three atoms and you have a 180, right? So we call that linear. But then when it is uh, like so, like born trifluoride, we call that trigonal planar. And then when we have SO2, one of the acid rain components, we call it bent just like water is also, also bent. So let's take a look at the chapter four concept jets. <coughs> really quickly and try to answer, try to answer that. So who knows, who knows the answer to number one? <coughs> B, bent. Very good. Because it says here, right, water? So bent. Very good. For number two? Make sure you sign in, right? Make sure you sign in the attendance. So what, what would be the answer to number two? In ionic compounds, black lose their valence electrons to form positively charged. So metals, right? Let us see. Metals tend to lose very good. So to form an ion, a sodium atom, what sodium and A has to lose, metal, lose, right? Lose. Yeah. So sodium atom, lose, so let it be. How many electrons will chlorine gain or lose? So chlorine will gain. Awesome, letter E, very good. Number five, an ionic compound 
has no net charge, right? Mm -hmm. Has a net charge of zero. Okay. A. An end item is always <coughs> negative. <coughs> letter A. How many electrons will aluminum lose? Three. Three. Letter A. Three. Ammonia molecule is a polar, right? Because it had a tetrahedra with uh, two electrons on top, so ammonia and H3 is polar. A. Yeah, with polar bonds, right? A. Why? Because why? Because if this is N, right? If this was N, then it's two, it has two electrons here, right? Because N is five in the outermost shell, right? So that's why it's a polar. polar. Okay, number ten. Nine. Nine. Oh, nine. In a molecule, very good, covalent A. Sharing electrons, so the key word, share. So I highlight or underline share. Number 10, the octet rule indicates A. Atoms lose, gain, or share electrons. So octet rule. The name of Cu2 plus, oh, we have a yeah. Oh, sorry, number 11. So now, this is what happens for the transition metals, right? So there's a Cu. Okay. So. Yeah. So let me go to uh, let me go to that PowerPoint. I I didn't want to go to it. Uh, Okay, so here's another rule that I was uh, so if you look at copper, transition metals tend to have either can have plus one, plus two, manganese for example, and then can have plus two, plus five, plus seven. So chromium can have several, it could be plus five, plus seven, it could have different types of, it could use electrons many ways, right? So if we look at copper, copper in problem question number you skip the one. The name of copper. Oh I yes. can I skip one? Okay. Skip one. Number eleven should be letter D for dog, right? Oh, yes. Any questions there? Everyone should know that, right? Because yes. it's oxide is two minus, right? Right? So it's D. So D for dog. Oxide, D for dog. Yeah. But then number eleven, copper. So it says here copper plus, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's a copper plus one, so you want to bubble letter A, copper in parenthesis, Roman numeral one. But if it's copper two plus, then it should be letter C, right? Okay, you got that? So now we have a, we have a compound called CCL4, carbon, and how many? So, now we need to name covalent compounds. So how do we go about naming covalent compounds? We name covalent compounds. So let's go now to carbon dioxide, right? We, we know CO2 is carbon dioxide. So how do we go about naming covalent compounds where the electrons are shared, right? So we say, okay, we have our sample CO2. Why do we say carbon dioxide? Because there's two oxygen. So for covalent compounds, we have to name 
the non-metal. So co covalent compounds are made out of non-metal and a another non-metal. Okay? So hence, when we say C, because carbon is a non-metal, right? And then O2, then we have to say carbon dioxide. Okay, so now what happens if I, I want to write down a compound that is Uh, we know we know this compound. What would be CO? Carbon <coughs> monoxide. Because there's only one, right? Carbon monoxide. Okay. What if we have what is P? Phosphorus? What if we have a compound called P2O5? So now we have to say how many phosphors are there? Two. So we say di, di phosphorus, and how many oxygen are there? Penta oxide. Yeah. Okay. So di phosphorus. So, so how do we name this compound H2O? Water. <laughs> but how do we name it? So, hydrogen. Hydrogen oxide. That, that sounds so dangerous, right? And you say, oh my God, I'm so thirsty. I need to drink some of my hydrogen oxide. That's what we want, right? So remember that water is dihydrogen oxide. So when you name covalent, Compounds where they're sharing, right? So non-metals plus non-metal. So you gotta say the di, tri, penta. Right? But when it's ionic, yeah. But when it's ionic, you cannot say disodium. It's only sodium. Okay. Now I have a trick question for you. <laughs> How would you name Al2O3? Remember now it's ionic. Right, so you say the metal first, aluminum oxide, okay? Yeah, aluminum oxide, right? Yeah, yeah, okay? Hence, when we go to number, what were we? 13, right? So we say carbon, tetrachloride, perfect, yeah. There you go. Yeah, the answer would be letter B. Non polar, why? Because when we draw, when we draw carbon, right? And there's four, four Cl, so Cl, 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 Cl. So they kind of cancel it. They cancel each other, right? So there's a net. So carbon. Tetrachloride, non-polar, so underline non-polar. Right? It has four bonds, right? Because the CL is pulling the electron. But because there's four of them, they kind of cancel each other out. So non-polar. So that's kind of like a trick question, right? Yeah. So now number 14. Oh, so C is the answer. Oh, so the answer is letter B. 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 Oh boy, non-polar. Underline non-polar. <coughs> Which of the following polyatomic ions has a positive charge? Remember, I gave you the example earlier. This one, right? What do we call that? Ammonia. Right? And H3 is ammonia. So then, ammonia. You know the, remember, so ammonia, so ammonia, cat iron, as it's plus, right? So you notice it's just written down. 
So you want to remember that NH4 plus is ammonia. Okay. So then, a black is the smallest neutral unit of two or more metal atoms held together by covalent bonds, a molecule letter C. And then number 16, a group of covalently bonded atoms. So that's, that's these are our polyatomic, yeah, polyatomic, which is letter D. What would be the correct formula for iron 2? C. C, very good. Iron 2 is the iron that carries hemoglobin. Iron 3 is the one that carries hydrogen. What would be the name of HSO4 minus? Hydrogen sulfate. D. The correct name for NCl3 would be? Remember, N is a non-metal, so hydrogen, perfect. A, trichloride, excellent. So now, what's the kind of interaction between hydrogen? No, the hydrogen molecule. We call this attraction called dispersion forces, letter D. Dispersion, yeah, dispersion forces. And the shape of boron trifluoride normally would always be uh, trigonal, right? Because three. You have tetrahedral, that's four. Bent tends to be two. Linear tends to be two. So what is the correct formula of iron three sulfide? So now it's F iron three will be Fe three plus, right? So if we have Fe three plus, so Fe three plus or iron three, right? So iron three. So what would be the formula of iron three sulfide? So now we got to put. First, we, to, to figure out the formula, you will write down iron, right, in 3 plus, and then you will want to write down sulfide, 2 minus. Right? So now we cross. So if sulfide is 2 minus, we got to put 2 in here. And because this is 3 plus, so we need to put So then we have to put three down there, right? So what's a superscript? Super on the top becomes the sub of the other. What is the super of the sulfide becomes the sub. So now we erase it, right? So now there's our iron three sulfide. <coughs> so this is the reason why she likes you to now a little bit iron, because later on when we talk about biochemistry, you're familiar with the iron 2 and the iron 3. Okay? I know it's hard to remember all these things, but it's such been a long day and you kind of sleepy, right, after work. But just, it's like when you're training for a marathon, right? You just keep on doing it and doing it, right? Little by little. Okay, what's the next? Where are we now? Okay. So now we have Fe2SO4 is called A. A. I am A. Awesome. You're applying what you learned. Wonderful. I would be letter A, right? Because why? Right. You know that. <laughs> who got it and who did it? I didn't get okay. it. I got it. You got it. I did it. I know. You got it, so share share with her. Who didn't get it? Who's close who's close by you then? You can share. Uh, who else didn't get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? No? Did you get it? Okay. I have a question. Okay, okay. Um, Let's put that on the board, right? I'm going to 
Yeah. Because they're still in. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Let's look at chapter 3, what you covered last week, right? So the next page, of, so behind chapter 4 is chapter 3, right? Okay, so let's look at chapter 3.